Alex here from the Four Week Natural in Austin. Austin, keep it weird. And for the longest time, people have talked a whole lot about the idea of self-amusement. And for the longest time, I've had this secret concept called deliberate illogicality about how to be kind of crazy, how to be kind of funny, how to elicit tests in order to drive game, to draw tests so that you can beat tests, so that you can demonstrate attraction, uh, deformalize interactions that are making you super fun, make yourself stand out from other guys who are approaching girls, and, and make yourself unique and stand out. And what better place to talk about it than Austin? This is the blog on deliberate illogicality. Tim, are we heading back? Here on Four Week Natural, this is how we get around program on these stupid ass scooters from one venue to another. An effective way to get from one venue to meet people, to get to another venue to meet people. Only problem is, you might you might die, you might get hit by a big Great Dane, you might get hit by someone who's high. But it makes for good, don't want to be waiting for taxis, you know. Now I find myself in Belgium, in Antwerp, next to some massive diamondy kind of thing. And I've got to continue this uh, uh, deliberate illogicality vlog from my magical Evolve electric skateboard, which I use to travel around Europe, uh, on my way to the Amsterdam uh, Four Week Natural right now. So let's get back to deliberate illogicality. Let's do it from the, the comfort of our four wheel skateboard while we watch this diamond thing disappearing into the background. Now, with, with deliberate illogicality, um, uh, one, of the, one of the teaching tools that I've used recently to describe uh, kind of attraction to students is that you want to be the kind of guy who, if a girl hooked up with you, her friends would be pretty impressed, right? You don't want to be the kind of guy who, if she hooked up with you, this is my little remote to control the skateboard, um, her parents would be impressed, right? You don't want to be boyfriend material, you want to be kind of like, um, thought of, you, like she wants to be thought of as a badass for scoring you, you know, in the eyes of her friends. That's kind of how it works. So, you know, you can have a spectacular body, a great career, good bank account, great network. This is a, a really interesting skate that I'm going for here. Um, some small bridge. You can be a really, a really good stand-up guy, Captain America, if you will. And as long as you can do something a little bit illogical there in the very beginning of the interaction, a little bit funny, a little bit crazy, so you can just establish that you're kind of a funny, interesting guy. Check it out. Whoa, bridge. Bridge will get you. You've got to be careful these steps. The Antwerp blog. Look at this bridge. It's like a, a bridge for boats. Boats and people. So you can establish straight away that you're in the category of guy who's unpredictable, all right? So another big thing that you gotta realize is that the more unpredictability doesn't equate to more attraction. Once you establish that you're an unpredictable kind of guy, a kind of a funny, unpredictable sort of guy who could do anything at any moment, you wanna kinda of keep that at bay. You don't wanna be a drug dealer who's just like dishing out drugs and making people high off you. You wanna kinda of make them you know, supply and demand. You wanna make them work for it and hope for it and wonder when it's coming next. Remember, once you've categorized yourself as an attractive kind of guy, you're kind of funny, you're a little unpredictable, you've got a full range of emotions, and you can do something deliberately illogical, then time is your ally. You don't actually need to actively exert yourself more, um, uh, be extra, have extra intent towards the person that you're targeting. I don't know where I'm going, by the way. Uh, and then eventually like your arm gets sore when you're blogging this way. Man up, Alex. Um, then time is your ally and you're just thinking about the front door rule. You're thinking about spending time with that girl until the end of the date, until the end of the club, building up familiarity. Time is most certainly your ally. Look at this nice park over here. Ooh. They wonder who is this idiot with a camera blog. How can you not be happy in a Belgian springtime day? So then, then time is your ally. All right, so that obviously begs the question, what is deliberate illogicality? How then, how do you do deliberate illogicality? I've got a friend on television in Australia. He was a good friend of mine for, for a while. Uh, he's been a good friend of mine actually since uh, 
2010 and then all of a sudden he becomes a national TV star uh, and he was actually national like famous for hooking up with hundreds and hundreds of girls how dramatic right and this is a big good-looking guy he's a surfer he's very charismatic um, very very comfortable with chicks and what he does to be deliberately illogical at the beginning of every interaction to set a standard where anything can happen oh let's go this way let's go in the yonder in this direction what he'll do he'll go up to a couple of girls we always do what's called an incidental approach where we, we very rarely will kind of cross the floor and directly speak to girls uh, where they're standing in a group of two or three we usually a bit lazy about it and we'll go to girl we'll go up to girls at the bar and what he will do is he will kind of do a little jig he'll do a little bit of a dance hello nice to meet you are you ladies having a great night and then he'll do a little bit of a hip rotation, a bit of an Elvis move, a little bit of a flail of the shoulders. Just showing him that he's not there to be super serious, that he is capable of a logicality, not, not taking things too formally. And straight away, here you've got a tall guy who can surf, who can speak to chicks. Many of you guys can, you know, respectable citizens that have an ability to approach. But he's also showing that this is not about to be a serious thing. Um, and do not make the mistake, I'm just looking around, that I don't die. You know, we don't... You don't want to have a dead vlog. Whew. Gotta love this camera, A6500. No product placement, by the way. Um, you, want to, you want to show that you can be crazy if you want to, but you also, you gotta realize that more craziness, illogicality, um, randomness and unpredictability, that does not add up to more attraction. Attraction is not the, the operative word here. We're not looking to build attraction, we're building, looking to have yourself categorized. All right, I'm gonna cross the road here, I'm gonna die. Uh, I have brakes on this thing, so should be okay. It smells like trash. Ah, because I'm next to a trash can. You show then that you're capable of it, and that's called a variable reinforcement. All right, Alex versus traffic. Round one. Go, 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 go. Don't die, don't die. What's more dangerous, cars or bikes? With a variable reinforcement schedule, it shows that um, people don't know when the next point of stimulus is gonna come up. That, you know, if you're gambling, if you're surfing on Facebook, if you're looking for messages on Facebook or checking your email, you don't know when that next thing is gonna come up and that's what makes it that much more kind of hooking and addictive. Now, with deliberate illogicality, um, from a coaching point of view, me coaching you, that means that I want you to be deliberately illogical to demonstrate that you can be, but that also naturally ties into your organic evolution into being a naturally attractive guy in that once once you realize that the front door is how the game is how the game is played oh, car is gonna hit me let's go for a little casual angle here see these like bikes gonna hit me as I cruise past honestly to be honest like I actually feel like uh, it's a little bit risque to talk about hooking up and sex and seduction on a vlog in public so by doing this nobody can actually hear me I'm in, like a little column of silence uh, on my skateboard bubble. So as I said, that, that does link in with the idea of becoming organically and natural because you realize that it's gonna be very logistically unusual to, to hook up with a girl or to kind of take things all the way before the end of the social event, the party, the nightclub, the date or whatever. Of course, sometimes, sometimes it can happen, but for the most part, it doesn't. Tram, you're really ruining my audio here. So to tie that in with being really a naturally attractive, being a natural, as you become very abundant with women, or if you know your friends who are naturals, you'll realize that they are going to be kind of self-amusing and illogical, goofy, joking around, saying provocative things um, early on in the interaction because they know that they can't control a human being's behaviors or outcome or anything like that. So what you're going to find is that naturals are generally, you know, taking up space, being funny, being goofy. And what I'm teaching you here to get an insight to kind of cut your, you know, cut years off your learning curve is that you can go up and be kind of silly in the beginning, show that you, that, that show that, 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 show, I can't even speak, I'm freezing. Show that it's possible that you can do it so the girls know that you're a funny, unstifled, charismatic kind of guy. So let me talk a little bit more about deliberate logicality. Let me run you through a couple of examples of what deliberate log a logicality might be. And you'll see that these things, these examples that I'm about to give you. Oh, there's a car. Don't hit me, car. How's my camera control? As good as my game control. Um, you'll see that these things do coincide with uh, game theory, uh, cheeky, cocky, funny, or whatever David D'Angelo calls it, uh, four range of emotions. Antwerp, you see like a diamond dealer, Jewish diamond dealer guy. 
Um, so, for example, one of, some of the things that I'll say very early on in the interaction, hi, my name's Alex, nice to meet you, I'm a photographer from Australia, um, would you like to go with me now and get a hotel room? Right off the bat in a social situation, almost playing like a game of chicken with the girl to see how she'll react. Right, we're going up the, up the hill here, what's this? Going up, we're going to go visit the bloody Ferris wheel. Da -da 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 -da. Let's not scare the civilians too much. You gotta see like when I'm on this thing, I see like an eight-year-old kid, an eight-year-old Eight-year-old kids are like, oh my god, it's got a power in a skateboard. I gotta tell you, it makes me happy too. So I'll say, hey, nice to meet you. Are you, are you single? I'm single. Do you wanna be boyfriend, girlfriend? Ah shit. My dad's gonna hate me. And I'll say that little bit of content at the beginning of an interaction just to show that I'm here to have a bit of a laugh. Um, and that that's my kind of personality. And then very soon after that, I'll go straight back into where you're from, what are you doing, interview questions. Uh, I'll even then kind of like take back my joke and say I'm just, just kidding about my dad thing. But he and I were, were talking about I should get married because my brothers are getting married, blah, blah, blah. Let's do a little bit of a pirouette, maybe even change hands here. Nice day for escape. Maybe you'll even be able to see a couple of little Belgian flags flying up over there. These kids looking at me like they, they admire me and they hate me. They got like skateboard jealousy. Camera work, good by me. Another thing, another another kind of reinterpretation of deliberate logicality is you might be in a social situation and you may, you know, step up and meet a girl or a group of girls. And then to, to integrate one of the things that RSD Jeffy says is you can cut the space, right? And a lot of people use this for attraction, which is completely wrong, but you can use it to demonstrate that you can be unpredictable, funny, uh, and stimulating to be around. Look at these kids, be careful. Don't get hit by the skateboard. <laughs> a lot of smiling, smiling faces. Booyah! Now, cobblestones. Now, the, look at this thing, like, the wheels. Wheels on the cobblestone, no issue. And then we've got a gradient of about 30 degrees. But then you got your brake. By the way, I have fallen off this thing before, and there was a lot of blood. There was like a pool of blood the size of my hand from my head. Not good! And then I never made that mistake again. Had a loose truck. All right, now we go into the Antwerp walking street. So, with cutting the space um, and how that ties into deliberate logicality, imagine you're you're a normal guy, you're meeting a friend, a, a, a girl through social circle. And you meet her, and you might just pull out of the blue, deliberately, illogically, pull out of the blue, oh my goodness, you're stunning, stop seducing me. And that can be, let me just say that again clearly without any wind, oh my god, you're stunning, stop seducing me. And then you can step up to her, you can cut that space, you can go toe to toe with her, face to face, nose to nose, shoulder to shoulder, almost in a playfully confrontational way. You're about to see a very beautiful square here. Um, and it's gonna get bumpy and That's gonna put a bit of social pressure and show that you're capable of doing these kind of social pressure moves Knowing that you're gonna demonstrate that you're an attractive kind of guy. You're an unstifled kind of guy There's a train. Be careful of the bloody train. That'll get you That'll get you. This is... I mean make blogging great again. I think I've done it. I think I've done it I mean, it's a bit bumpy bloody trains everywhere people looking at me don't know what's going on and so you show that you can, what, what we call in four week natural land, physical expression, you're doing it deliberately or logically, all right? So you, the, first, the first stage of this, some examples, is you're categorizing yourself as an attractive kind of person. What a bloody nice fountain. How can I blog and not be distracted? You're showing you're, you're an attractive kind of guy with all the moves, you're unstifled. Another huge uh, terminology that we're using is called that trinity. You're implementing that trinity, that's three things. That is, you can be physical, you can use a negative range of emotions, and you can be a little bit sexual as well, right? That's the trinity. Those are the three things 
that that you, what, it means you can be a friendly kind of guy. Um, you can act kind of friendly, but you're never going to be put in the friend zone because you're remembering the trinity. You're remembering the things that's going to have you not categorized into the friend zone. Let's go get ourselves over to the other square. So some of these Belgian chaps, they got a good bloody mustache. We're just we're just cruising down now through some little streets. Vamos. Hello, mate. Oh, look, a bloody big church. And another, another square. Square after square. Angry civilians. Give them a little wave. There's a dog and a baby asleep. Just what you need. So, another way to be a really nice guy, accepted by all, um, a really easygoing kind of chap. Where is this bloody hotel? Oh. Bloody angry. Teachers in Belgium angry. When you roll up and you do something a little unusual, a little uh, illogical, and something that could be a bit negative, a bit sexual, a bit physical, um, based on the examples that I gave you, you are going to elicit a test and you want to elicit tests, okay? If you go up and you have a kind of a friendly uh, conversation, and I'm thinking of my, my man Sean in Austin, Texas, if you're having a regular conversation, hello, my name's Sean, I've got a job. Do you have a job? Oh, cool, we're chode friends now. But if you then add in, um, Sean is Indian, actually, he's Indian, United States kind of chap, Indian, Hong Kong. And he, if he was to, to throw early into the conversation a bit of deliberate logicality and say something to the effect of, oh my goodness, I would love to win a game of cricket and then sleep with you, the number one cheerleader. The girls can be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and Sean, obviously, he's going to be tested, right? And he's going to be like, oh, madam, I'm just joking. I know that, you know, cricket is a very sexual game and you're American, so we just got to learn to understand one another's cultures. And he beats that test and then it's game on. It's, it's fucking game on. That's seduction. Be careful of the small bike. That is a hazard. When you're on an electric skateboard, the only thing you really got to worry about, not, not trains, it's small, unpredictably moving children because they will bloody get you. I've never hit one. I'm very careful around child areas. Um, so, if you, for example, were to do a physical deliberate logicality, yeah. The more I think about it, the more I like this theory. I've got the whole crowd of people just watching me. Bonjour. Uh, I don't know how to say it in Flemish. I'm in Fl Flemland. Flanders. I'm in Flanders, like Ned Flanders. It is kind of happy out here. Um, imagine you were to cut the space, right? And cut the space is not an attraction technique. It is to trigger uh, interaction and flirting and tests and that's what drives the game that's what makes the game actually work why don't we go in a different loop so you can see light on a different side of my face and so if you hello you get scared um if you were to cut the space and go nose to nose toe to toe and kind of almost shape up to a girl as in like can you take the pressure can you take the intimacy can you take the social uh pressure actually of me making this pseudo move on you she's going to be like oi hey you back up like what this is pretty full on who do you think you are how confident do you think you are what the fuck is going on here then the tests begin and you play the game in a test loop and that's great you want to be creating what we call uh passive tests where it's just on continual ongoing banter uh calling you out you having comebacks you challenging and confronting and that, that's really, that's what flirting is. That's what the game is. But you need to be the silly one, the deliberately illogical one. Because you're going to be the one. Ooh, don't crash, Alex. I should do like a deliberate, illogical crash in front of a girl. But everyone here is like old people in Antwerp right now. So. As you can see them here. It's like, you know the movie Speed? It's like, don't go under 60 k's an hour, miles an hour. Otherwise, you're going to die. Um... So that, yeah, that is what's gonna, <laughs> what's gonna run the game. You're gonna be playing a really fun back and forth, sh like stacks of banter, and that test elicitation, that's the thing that's gonna make your game really fun. And now, from your point of view, we'll relate this back to you, the user. One of my biggest issues that my students have is one of motivation. They lack motivation, and they, even you might be finding the conversations you're having to be 
a little bit more boring than you want them to be. Hey, that's fine. That's uh, that happens. So by you basically being a provocative kind of guy, you know, like Hank Moody from uh, Californication, or I'm trying to think of other other like more provo- Charlie Sheen type characters, by you being provocative and and triggering people around you, not reaction seeking, but triggering. Alex, that's the crowd. Now, when you're on an electric skateboard, you've got to remember that this is a pedestrian walkway first and a skate ramp second. So, pedestrians first. Give them all the space they bloody well need. <clears throat> We're going to go up to the, the central station of uh, wherever we are. Antwerp, di- the diamond center. There's a lot of diamonds up in the center, so we can see some of them. Now, obviously for me, let me relate myself to you. I'm having literally tens of thousands of interactions and observing tens of thousands of interactions as well. So I need to be provocative in order to, that's a nice laneway. We're gonna go up that laneway over there. I need to be provocative in order to keep myself amused in my interactions. Otherwise, it's every conversation is gonna be boring, platonic, uh, and it's not really going to go anywhere. So I like to do this deliberately a logical, provocative, immature, people think I'm silly kind of stuff. It almost presents, and I have a bit of a reputation as being like some kind of drunken party guy. No, I'm just self-amusing because I understand the underlying dynamics of what it is. To be a fun, self-amusing, deliberate logicality, test eliciting, self-motivated, self-motivated guy by me being the provocative character in the interaction because that's going to drive the interaction forward quickly change hands we're going alleyway we're going up an alleyway now and that is not a euphemism for getting action that is just meaning that we're going in an alley over there we call it future alley we're going to cross over the tram tracks and then we're going to keep talking about motivation trams we didn't crash that's good look at this Wide angle. Oh, oh, the men are like, whoa. <laughs> Pedestrians first, always remember. Thank you. I need almost like a horn, a bullhorn. And so, obviously, you know, I think I'm, the fact of the matter is at the moment that I'm the most, oh, this is lovely, I've never seen this bloody thing before. Get for the pedestrians. Here we go. Little garden. Little garden. Whatever it is. Another church. Possibly a Presbyterian church. Who knows? I don't know anything about it. Um, being the most experienced pickup coach in the world, I need to keep my interactions interesting. And one of the funniest things is to tr- by, by triggering somebody, by being a little funny, self-amusing, deliberately illogical, and as it, like not reaction seeking, not trying to control reactions, but just throwing out stimulus to kind of to trigger uh, and provoke people just a little bit. That's, that's a stack of innocent fun. And that's great. I want you to have a lot of innocent fun because by you being illogical, dancing, being sexual, being physical, not overdoing it, but just showing that you're capable of it very early in the interaction, It'll put a smile on your face, and in turn, that'll put a smile on their face, and in turn, it's gonna drive the test, it's gonna keep you motivated, it's gonna put a spark in your bloody eye. Whoa, that was a crash. Walked out, unpredictable. It's like, in, in karate, you need to learn how to fall. After you, sir. Pedestrians first. Yeah. Oh, you've gotta, you've gotta get your bike drama, street politics. Just living living Alex life today, aren't you? Four week natural people. I gotta get it. This is a small sidewalk if I'm honest. And so we're talking about like with deliberate logicality, putting the spark in your own eye, going up and creating a trolling situation because that's good for everybody. And then in turn, let's now look at it from the girl's point of view, you are going to enable them. You're gonna crack open the conversation so that people can have fun in a way that they may not have previously been able to. I don't know where I am. I see things. And that's good. 
now I'm in the Antwerp main shopping street, basically diamond territory. And legally, I mean, I go past all these cops all the time, and legally, there, there is no legislation against powered boards yet, but soon there will be. Ah, uh, border. Who drove it better? But the cops never pull me up. I mean, they've got b bigger things to worry about than, you know, uh, Evolve skateboards. Made by Australia, by the way. Shipped over here to Europe for me. Oh, I've got a buddy. We've got a ducks fly together. Quack, quack, quack. You can't fly with me because I'm much faster. Um. And now let's relate, let's just relate that back. <clears throat> By you being a perpetually motivated kind of guy. You want to get a bit of water found in the in the video? Yeah, I think so you do. Water fountain. Um So you can tie that into being outcome dependent, right? Tie that further into being outcome dependent in that you I always tell my students that you got to assume that you're not going to get laid on day one. Even you know, mystery mystery said it best: is that it does indeed take you know seven hours uh, of getting to know a girl before you can hook up with her. Obviously, sometimes that can happen a little bit sooner, sure, but um, kind of go off that. So, if if you've got an interaction in front of you uh, and you're having a good time and you don't have outcome dependence and you're not assuming to get laid on day one then all you've really got left is a bit of self-amusement, a little bit of logicality, back and forth with the test, a battle of the wits, building that emotional hype and that vibe. Um, that's gonna be really a really fun flirting experience for, for you and the girl. And that really lovely altruistic feeling of showing her a good time and having a bit of banter in a way that most guys are probably way too scared to give her bad banter anyway. So another teaching technique that I use uh, in relation to non-outcome dependence and deliberate logicality is a lot of my students, you know, a lot of people have a lot have issues with having fun. They don't know how to do it, they don't know how to perpetuate it, they don't know where fun comes from. And of course, in the context of picking up girls, here we go, going down the street, watch where you're going, Alex, a man on his phone, be careful. On to be honest, when you go out for you know cold approach pickup. Really, nine times out of 10, you're not gonna get laid from the situation. That's like a statistical kind of proof. That's a statistical set variable. Oh, it's nice out here. Um, so if you're, not gonna, if you're not gonna get laid, nine times out of 10, my advice to every student is have fun not getting laid. Have fun. Be a bit of a jackass. Don't lay it on too thick. Just prove that you have jackass abilities. Um, Ugh. And then you can live a life where you're having fun not getting laid. And obviously getting laid and, and having good results with pickup and women is gonna come to you a lot easier because you're not focused on the outcome. You're having fun not getting laid by joking around, swiveling your hips, playfully escal escalating future adventures projections, disqualifying the girl, using overly sexual statements, um, being outlandish in your claims like I'm the king of the world, I'm the smartest man alive, I am uh, I wrote a book on Kama Sutra. Outlandish types of things, ah, uh, the hospital's here for me. And so then that ties back into my, one of my favorite phrases is that if you're not gonna get laid, you might as well have fun not getting laid. You might as well have fun not getting laid. How do you do that by, by all those things that I just mentioned a moment ago. So let's bring it all back as we come towards Central Station where I've got to get a train. You can take this uh, thing on a train by the way, which is pretty cool. Skateboards go on the train. You can charge it while you're on the train, a bit of juice when you get to your end of destination. Um, deliberate illogicality is a terminology that I use. Not self-amusement, it's to be deliberately illogical, to, to categorize yourself as the kind of guy who's there to have fun, who's not managing his uh, impression too closely. And it's a smooth ride, to be honest, on the, uh, on the skateboard with the wide angle lens. A6500 autofocus system. Um, it creates a variable reinforcement schedule for the girl and she's going to be hooked knowing that you might be funny unpredictable again anytime soon um, that will then trigger tests and if you beat the tests then you can flirt if you're trolling that's going to motivate you you're going to have a lot of fun you can be a friendly guy but you can include sexuality physicality and a full range of emotions what we call the trinity those three things sexuality physicality and negative expressions as I 
carved of a crowd into this lovely big square. You know there's a bloody Jura Garden? Oh no, what do they call it? Oh no, Zoologic. In Sweden it's called a Jura Garden. Animal Garden. There it is. If you like bloody lions, we've got lions. Hello Central Station, good to see you. Good to see you. There's a camel up there. Bump. And then, you know, if you're to kind of to wrap it all up, if you're not gonna get laid, you might as well have fun. Not getting laid. That's the moral of the bloody story here. So that's the liberal logicality. You can basically be a normal, friendly guy with a sense of humor, but kind of exert something into the conversation. One or two things only that's gonna draw a test uh, by you because you're being silly. And then you want to go back to normal mode. You want to go back to normal mode just as just to give the girl a variable reinforcement schedule of unpredictability. All right, we're going in. Going to the train station on a set of wheels. Don't hit any civilians. I don't think the security guard's going to like this one little bit. That's smooth. Where are the security guards? They'll be here in a second, won't they? I mean, you can roll a bag through here, so why can't you roll a skateboard? I mean, basically, I'm on a, what do you call a... It's basically a wheelchair without the chair. That's what it is. Antwerp Central Station, pretty damn cool. So, really glad to share this vlog with you today as I drive from Paris to uh, Amsterdam, starting the Fort Whitney Natural up here. For those of you watching, we've got a free tour on Sunday night before the program starts now on Wednesday night, the 22nd of uh, May, going through until the mar to the start of July, about around about the start of July. Um, and really looking forward to, to hanging out in Holland. Stacks of tourists coming through, Swedish, American, French. Australian, British. Um, the Dutch community is one of the biggest communities in the entire world and I've always wanted to do a, a four week natural there because I think that Dutch people are some of the most emotionally intelligent people on the entire planet. But one of the biggest problems with Dutch people is because they are so emotionally intelligent, they also uh, let that emotional intelligence govern them. They get very emotionally overwhelmed and stimulatorily overwhelmed and that can make Dutch guys extremely stifled and then overcompensate. So it's a really, really interesting group of people for me to work with, uh, Dutch women, Dutch men, because they're very high consciousness communicators. They're very self-aware of what they're doing and why, but it's a, it's a big self-discipline willpower battle for them to get on top of uh, their emotional sensitivity to make sound decisions based on my experience in the game. So, looking forward to the, the four-week natural there in Holland. Can't bloody wait for it. And uh, hope you've enjoyed the blog here today on the four-week natural. I'm Alex Social, and many more blogs coming to you guys pretty soon. I try to do like a, a fancy exit. Catch up.